So I'm in the kitchen today and I'm going to make a citrus syrup. Now a syrup is simply 50% sugar and 50% water. So I've got half a cup of sugar there and to flavour that I'm going to use an orange. So I'm just going to whack the sugar into a saucepan and I've got some hot water. I'll have half a cup of sugar in there. And just start stirring that in to get the sugar to dissolve. So while the syrup's warming up, I'm just going to take an orange and a really fine zester. Well, it's a fine grater actually, but I'm going to use it as a zester. Because we only want the zest, we don't want the pithy bit because it's bitter. So there we go, we've got most of the zest off that orange, that's great. And what we're left with is this uh, zest and uh, it smells absolutely fantastic. Really, really potent stuff. Beautiful. I'm just going to take a spoon and scrape that off the grater. I don't want to get this too hot because it will kill the uh, delicate flavour of the zest. Right, so just when we've got a nice little bit of bubble there, I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to take the zest and then pop that zest into that mixture. Oh, really? <laughs> really great, isn't it? Yeah. And literally we're just going to leave that to sit and, uh, and, and, and cool and infuse. Oh, it's really fantastic. Can't see anything through my glasses, but it smells good. So if you haven't got a zester or a fine grater, another way you can make a, a citrus based syrup is you can use orange peel. I'm just going to chop these up a bit as well. I'm going to take the same quantity of sugar, so that's half a cup or thereabouts. And this time I'm just going to whack all of that peel straight in the pan. It's going to smell marvellous in here all afternoon. And we're looking for a low simmer. We don't want to get that too hot. Right, we're going to give that 10 minutes and uh, then move on to the next stage. So it's, it's a pretty thin syrup, but tastes mm, absolutely beautiful. So there you go. Well, that's the finished syrup. We've got a lovely orange colour to it. It's quite uh, it's quite light. It's quite thin, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's just the sort of thing I was looking to create. So I'm just going to use a, a big straining spoon and get the bulk of that peel out. Then I'm going to strain off that liquid just like I did the other one. So this was the first one that we made with the zest and then this one was the one that we made with the peel. Colour wise this is a lot brighter and uh, more appealing than this. This looks a bit dull actually. Taste wise mm, that is absolutely stunning. Really really amazing. This one, let's have a little taste of that. Well, it's different, more sugary, um, less orange taste in that, less citrus. The one made with the zest is a, is a lot better syrup. So because I want to make this uh, mix PVA friendly, so I can use it in PVA sticks, I'm just going to take a little bit of uh, PVA tape, because I need to see whether this syrup, this sugar water mix, basically is PVA friendly as is, or whether I need to do something to it. Right, let's dip the uh, tape in here. Right, that's had a good dip. Has it lost any integrity? No. Nope. I can't see any change in the strength of that at all. So there we go, learn something new. If you mix hmm, if you mix sugar with water, then it's PVA friendly basically. So that's great. I'll just test the other mixture just to make sure there's not a different reaction. 
that's great just as a control to make sure there's no funny business here this is just a cup of cold water and I'm going to use the other end of the PVA tape so that's about the same time I had it in the sugar mixture and oh yeah completely gone yeah so standard fast dissolved PVA in water obviously goes very very quick so if you want to make anything PVA friendly you can also add salt to it as well so in this case I've got enough sugar in there so they don't need to but if you were using less sugar for a less sweet mix then I could have boosted it with a bit of salt in order to get that PVA friendly factor that I need. So obviously you can just go down your local tackle shop and buy breadcrumbs but I wanted to do it the old fashioned way, the way I learned to do it as a kid, which is all you need to do is take some stale bread, dry it off in the oven and then blend it up in a liquidizer. So these breadcrumbs have been in here a few days now and they're absolutely dry as a bone. And this way this is going to keep a very long time. As long as you keep these this mix dry then it will last, last for a very long time indeed. So I'm just going to knock up a, a small test mix and I don't need much because this is this is just a test at this stage. And I'm going to take the, the best syrup and I'm just going to put a teaspoon and a half in there and start to work that in. So I've just added enough syrup here that the mix is just kind of binding together smells absolutely fantastic fresh breadcrumbs orange i'm just going to put that into a stick to see how that's uh, that's looking so i'm going to form that into a nice stick there ah, i can actually just see the sugary syrup coming out of that a bit so uh, so there we go that's a really compact that it's going to stay stay together really nice and tightly in flight so that's a very simple citrus based pva stick mix that you can use in the winter got good solubility got good attraction with a citrus sing but you could use it all year round to be honest it's going to catch you a car but how can we make that even more attractive so one thing that you can add to the mix and that's some little citrus uh, citrus boilies so i'm going to, actually going to be using these as, as bottom baits these are little 12 millers what we're going to do is we're going to blend some of these up and we're going to add that to the pva crumb stick mix so you don't need much of these I'm literally just going to take a handful that's the resulting crumb very similar in color to the syrup that we made of course I'm just going to take some of these and I'm going to sprinkle it into my test mix here so you can see we've just got a nice little amount of fleck of boiling in there amongst the crumb and it's all going to work together beautifully so when I was putting this recipe together I started to think about what other citrus based ingredients I could use to get some real zing into it. I found some um, uh, miel de fleur d'orange which is honey that the bees have fed on um, orange flowers. It smells absolutely fantastic you really get the orange uh, the orange in there and I've been having it on porridge and toast and absolutely fantastic stuff. The other ingredient I wanted to incorporate was condensed milk. Now 20 years ago back when I got into my carping I used evaporated milk into spod mixes because it created a, a great kind of cloud effect in the water. I thought it'd be really nice to get some of that uh, a dense cloudy milky sugary liquid to create a local little cloud that's going to kick off loads of attraction around the spot. The last element I wanted to include is a little bit of alcohol. Now I was actually inspired by uh, some of Adam Penning's work on this stuff. He loves whacking a bit of uh, Baileys into his mixes and stuff. I thought that sounds really fun and interesting. What orange based uh, spirits could I introduce into this mix? And of course the French classic, you know, we're here in France so we might as well use the French authentic thing which is Cointreau so a bit posh I know but you could use triple sec or any cheap orange based liqueur would be great. Alors c'est bon? It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> mm. Right here we go then we're going to start building the ultimate homemade citrus syrup. I'm going to get a bit of heat under that pan. So at the moment this is very thick and gloopy. So I'm going to add the zest syrup that I made earlier. I'm going to whack all that in there. 
I'm going to get some of the orange honey, a good spoon of that. And we're going to get some of the good stuff in there. I'm going to use a tablespoon. Wow. It's a very long time since I've had any of that. Gosh, that, that really does pack a punch. Right, let's have a little taste of this. Just warm it up gently. Really, really, really good. So there's just a little bit of steam coming off the pan now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it a day at that. It's just warmed through gently. So that's it. We've got all the elements together now to make the final stick mix. We've got our boily crumb, we've got our bread crumbs, and we've got a super, super powerful homemade citrus syrup. So it's just a matter of combining those together and then make the stick mix. Then we're going to take some of the homemade citrus syrup. So I've just added enough syrup there so it's starting to bond together. That's just just what we want. Now this is an optional extra on this uh, on this one. These are some two mil citrus pellets, but if you haven't got any of these, you know, really don't worry about it. Right, let's knock up a test stick. Have a bigger stick. That's a bit. That's a bit more like it. That's the bit. More like the size I'd actually want to fish with. This is the first one I made. Still quite a lot of breadcrumb smell off coming off that. Yeah, you know, it's it's faintly of orange, but not a not a lot. Not not when I compare it to this one, which just absolutely reeks of citrus. So that is what I'm going to fish with for the next six eight weeks. So I'm really excited by this experiment. It's simple, it's fun, and uh, let's see how it goes. So if you want to keep this fresh for a couple of weeks, then you can just stick it in an airtight container like this, and stick it in the fridge. If you want to keep it for a bit longer than that, I'm going to pour some in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that in the freezer just to do a test freeze to see how that stores. Should be absolutely fine. Okay, what have we got then? Ah, interesting. So it's kind of, yeah, it's just cold, sticky, sticky goo. So the sugar has stopped it from freezing, but uh, that's great actually. Yeah, absolutely no issues with the PVA melting at all. Both absolutely fine. The mix still smells absolutely fabulous. So this is the mix that we made yesterday. It's dried out a bit, obviously. If I put a bit more of the syrup in that, then that would hold it together really nice as a as a crumb mix. You could probably just use it like that, but um, yeah, if you wanted to keep that for a longer. And again, I just I just freeze the lot and then defrost it, reconstitute it with a bit more syrup, and uh, yeah, good to go. So for this little tank test, I'm just going to use tap water. Yes, I could use lake water, but I'm just going to use ice cold tap water. It's the temperature thing that's important to make, so we make sure that the PVA actually melts at a reasonable rate. Stick number one in there. Uh, interesting, a bit of trapped air. That would give it a kind of parachute bag effect, but it sunk just fine. Right, let's get number two in there as well. Again, a bit of trapped air, but it sinks just fine. Now we've got number number one busting apart already. Number two's just gone. Yeah, no issues with the PVA breakdown kicking off on all dimensions that's great almost like a kind of uh, homemade fizzing stick mix basically so a much slower breakdown on the on the second one this first one you know there was not a lot of holding that together and it's broken down into a little pile very quickly. For the third one, what I want to do, I just want to 
give it some extra dip sort of thing you do just kind of last second before you weigh it out basically Let's see how that goes Yeah, we get that buoyant effect. Oh, you can see the clouds start to kick off. So number one, we didn't have any of the condensed milk in this, so it's it stayed crystal clear. Nice pile of crumbs. So if you know if that's the mix you want to create, then that's cool. But if we look at number two here, we can see the addition of the condensed milk as you know we've got that cloud, which is what I wanted to create. And number three, breaking down nicely, we've got this 3D effect as well. We've got a clouding effect. You can see the edge there where the PVA has actually not broken down so you've got a kind of semi dissolved stick. Nothing really to worry about but just be aware of the fact that uh, if you do a last minute dip in syrup it is going to slow down the breakdown fractionally. Uh, this is off for a couple of minutes now so you've got a really super uh, little cloud of attraction around your hook bait there. So I just want to see if I can actually get any any taste from the water. Obviously my taste buds are nothing compared to a carp. I'm just going to take a little bit here. Oh yeah. Yeah it's subtle but you definitely get the sweetness, you get the citrus. Cool, time to go fishing.